2017. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change coming to you from a beautiful Colorado-like 71 degree clear sky gem city. I know my friend Steve Wolfong is here, director of recruiting for 24-7 Sports. How goes it in Indianapolis? Daniel, I'm sending you those clear skies from the Naptown region. It's gorgeous out, not too hot. going to be 72 today. Life is good, and it's always good for Ohio State on the recruiting trail. We all know this. Um, it's going to get even better this weekend. For those of you who have been living under a rock, you don't know this. LaChristian Blue Smith, the receiver out of Huber Heights Wayne, arguably the best player in the Dayton area, will be committing live on ESPN, Wayne, the Dayton Powerhouse will be playing against Gibsonia, excuse me, Pine Richland High School in Gibsonia, Pennsylvania. It'll be televised live on ESPN. Right now, I believe that the plan is for Blue to commit at halftime, but it will be part of that celebration in some way. He is down to some finalists. There's been a long-running feud on this podcast. Steve thought Blue was going to be Blue, as in Kentucky. I have long since maintained that I felt he would end up at Ohio State. Now, truth be told, and full disclosure, I've said this several times, uh, very close to Blue's family and his father, Lorenzo Rennie Smith, actually trains my son. So I may have some inside information here. I may not, but I'm looking forward to this weekend. And I saw your crystal ball flip last night. You gave a good reason for that. Someone gave you a call. Well, I, I mean, all the intel had been saying Ohio State for the last couple of weeks. I was just waiting for the the nail to be driven into to that one. Just to, I just needed to know that it was basically official before I made made my switch. At this point, you know, I was already so late in the game with Kentucky that might as well just wait until the till the hammer dropped. But uh, <clears throat> Ohio State. Uh, Ohio State is going to add another top 247 recruit to the nation's number one recruiting class in the country, a young man that things really picked up quickly for with. You know, I think this it was Kentucky until a May visit to Ohio State, and, and from there the Buckeyes have been all in, and Blue Smith is, you know, excited about his opportunity in Columbus. And, of course, we must say this, nothing is etched in stone. Um, there's never a done deal in recruiting. We all know this. I did check in on Blue this morning just for some updated stats. Six foot five, 198 pounds, most recent, uh, 40 times clocked in the four fives. He's an honor student at Wayne. He's actually going to graduate early, but he's going to play basketball. So he'll be taking classes at Sinclair Community College uh, towards his college degree. So you're getting a complete prospect here. Not only now, Blue, what, complete what number is he how many – How many? he's got, like, a bunch of older brothers and sisters, right? And they're all – I think most of them went to college on academic scholarships, if I remember his dad telling me. How, where's he fall in that? He's, he's, he's the baby a, of the fam. Sure. And how and, many uh, brothers and sisters does he have? I believe five. Gotcha. Um, Texas. They're all, some are in Texas. Um, some are around. But um, you want to talk about so parents it parents did a good dad. job. Oh, man. I mean, his dad is as involved in a good way. Um, his dad actually really helps out a lot of kids in the area who are looking to uh, play athletics at a higher level. Um, you know, my son had the great force of working out with Blue and a kid named Tory Patton in the fall for basketball last fall. And Blue is just a quality human. Um, it's a big debt for them. But not to mention it comes from Wayne, which always has a ton of talent, but um, – you know, they do say – Terrific I mean, athlete. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I remember yeah. Vrabel, when he was here, talking about if you see Dad, when he's talking about Dolphus Washington, he's like, have you seen his dad? Rennie still looks like he could run some routes. Um, so it, it's a big get. Not only that, if you think about it, as I was compiling everything <clears> here, 
if you look at the state of Ohio, top five players in the state for this class, number one, Jackson Carmen, number two, Jalen Gill, number three, Tyreek Smith, number four is Blue, and number five is Dallas Gantt, which means Ohio State's very likely, wouldn't you agree, to finish with the top five players in the fold from the state? Yeah, I mean, that's what the crystal ball says. Jackson Carmen, the number one offensive tackle in the country for the 24-7 sports composite. Uh, he's looking at Clemson and USC flirting with Wisconsin and, and Florida State as well, but you got to like the Buckeyes there. And then Tyreek Smith, that one's a little more interesting because he's a California native, and, and uh, those schools are recruiting him hard out there. But still like Ohio State and their prowess on the trail and, and how hard they recruit their top targets. And um, that's, you know, that's a, a guy that they covet at the position as well. Okay, so if you look at the composite, the 24-7 sports composite, I was this morning. Ohio State already has commitments from the number 13, 19, 22, 25, 33, 36, and 37. And they're the crystal ball leaders for number five, Micah Parsons. Number nine, Jackson Carmen, the aforementioned. And number 14, Anthony Cook. Has anyone in your mind and your money recruiting memory ever hooked 10 of the top 37 prospects in a class? All I know is that Ohio State's class last year finished number one in average ranking per commit all time in 24-7 sports rankings history, and I believe that this class will surpass that. So, no. Yeah, it's incredible. If you go by the idea that the top of the top 30, we're going to have – they may have seven five-star prospects, which is just gluttonous but fantastic. Um, what, what's your vibe on those guys in terms of Carmen, um, Smith, Cook, as people look out as on their time frame? Well, those are guys that I think they're going to have to wait a while on, so it will be exciting around December. Um, if they're if we're talking about an early enrollees and and then February if they're taking it the distance, but I, I'm not expecting any of those guys to pop in the fall. <clears throat> so right. there'll be there'll be some smoke screens and, and things of that nature and maybe some buzz for another school following a visit or two. But I just right now it's hard to imagine those guys going anywhere but Ohio State. But there'll be a season to be played and you yeah. know we'll see how it goes. Speaking of a season to be played, we may be getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, and we will obviously touch more on this on the day of, but you will be in Bloomington for the Buckeyes and the Hoosiers to start the season. What is your vibe on that game, knowing what you do about both squads? Well, you expect Ohio State to win going away. They're superiorly talented, um, but anytime you go on the road and you're playing in an opener and they're going to be juiced. That Indiana football team is going to be juiced up, and I actually think they have a chance to be a pretty solid football team. And they have a chance that you know we've talked about it before. They have a very talented receiving core, and Ohio State's breaking in a brand new secondary. Indiana's got a returner at the quarterback position, and, and Richard Legow. I think that there's an opportunity for them to be competitive. But now will they? We'll see. Um, but I'm also interested in, in, in just seeing what the atmosphere is like in the stadium. I'm, I'm, ima- I'm imagining Ohio State taking that place over, uh, being at least oh, good 50-50. Lord. And uh, I'm looking forward to finding some Bucknuts tailgates beforehand, so keep me posted on those as I like to pop in, say hi, and, and uh, maybe mix a drink or two. Well, everyone knows you're a man of the people. And, yes, traditionally that's a home game for Ohio State. I do think you'll probably get a little bit more Indiana love there considering it's, uh, you know, such a nationally televised game early in the school year and they don't have a losing record yet. Just kidding. But it should be a lot of fun. This is the day that the Hoosiers shoot their picture of the stadium from above, though, because the Buckeyes were red, the Hoosiers wear red. Always a good day to get that photo taken. No question, and you can probably adjust the tint a little bit to make it look more Indiana red. We appreciate Steve stopping by. Don't forget, Buck Nutters, this commitment will be televised for Blue. 
Sunday, 1 p.m. on ESPN. It's a really cool game against Pine Richland. Pine Richland, you may remember, has a quarterback named Phil Jerkovic. The original offer for the Buckeyes in this class, he ended up going to Notre Dame. So it will be a very competitive game and a good one. We hope you have a great Thursday. Have a great one, Bucknutters. Have a good one, guys. Thanks.